or my favorite, Instagram, where I just scroll and scroll and scroll. Do you do it a lot? I think I'm probably... Addicted? um, No, I can stop any time. But I do look at Instagram way too much. You do? I think so. Like how many hours a day? And I'm talking hours. Hours? Honestly. 18 hours, probably. You're right at the edge of addiction. Okay, all right. Yeah, you're so getting I'm not, real not close. That Watch it. Just yeah. you got. Just be careful. You're right at the edge, guy. Yeah. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. There's no artificial intelligence here. There's barely a, any intelligence. Not even any yeah. organic intelligence. I mean, you know. How about dumb eye? Yeah, instead of AI. Yeah. AI don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I don't That's know. That's the only AI we had was AI hey, don't know. <laughs> fuck you. And then throw a fucking garbage can on him and kick him back up his fucking stoop. Yeah. Get back inside, AI. Hey, hey, oh. yeah, I don't know. Hey, I, like I don't know. Yeah. That could be the AI for dumb people. Yeah. Hey, hey I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Yeah. It, then, and you ask it questions and you have it do shit. Hey, hey, I don't know. Can you please make a beautiful picture of a starry night with a house oh. in the foreground? Hey, I don't know how to do that. Hey, I don't, hey, I fuck don't you. know. What fuck am I, you. Yeah, what am I, AI? What am I, Spoon? Why don't I make you a nice lasagna instead, yeah, yeah. eh? you always asking me to make pictures for you. I can do other things. Is A, I don't know, Italian? Sounds uh, like he is. Nah, he's one. He's Italian. He think. You know, oh, he's, he's like, a Italian. Yeah, he's probably a Greek guy. <laughs> he's, a, yeah. Yeah. he's a Greek Italian. Yeah, he's like you he's know, Greek Italian. He's, he gets his twenty three and me back. And, wow. Yeah, thirty percent British. <laughs> Look, shit. Oh, Has wow. an identity crisis. He's got a potty mouth too. Apparently. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. Hey, I don't hey. give a fuck about not. Wow. Yeah, I fucking say what I want. Hey, I say what I want. Wow. You don't like it? <laughs> Find another AI. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I can be anything now. Yep. Anything you want. Whew. Guy. Well, hey, guy. AI hey, guy. Hey, I, I, I. Let's hit the theme music. We got uh, the Holland Highway podcast, ladies and gentlemen. You're missing the, you didn't hit the D or the, that H or I know, this but T. I like to do it in Cajun. I have a, most of my listeners Ooh, are Cajun. Okay, you have a very regionalized yeah, uh, audience. Yeah, almost. In, I'd say I have about a 90% Cajun audience. Yeah. So when I, I go to the Hala Hawa Paka. You have some room here to put with extra onion oh, or yeah. something really Cajun it up. Or how about I guarantee. <laughs> Right, I like that. The ha- with ha- the crawfish, ha- yeah. Uh, as the T, I guarantee dash T. See, yeah. It's two crawfish making oh, a T, and you're like, I don't want to eat at this fucking stupid place. Well, there it's that potty mouth again, guy. Hey, I don't care about Cajun food. Wow. I make Italian food. Wow. You're eighty percent. What you? Uh, you're English, right? Yeah, I'm British, dude. You know what? what you're- My parents are from England. Wow, Mangland? Mangland, yeah. Where's Mangland? Uh, it's over there in the fucking Mangland. Dude, you, it's like you're putting the gumbo on the jumbo over there, dude. Yeah, I'm putting the gumbo on the jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love about all this, though? Because this was one of the questions I want to ask you, right? By the way, Will Sasso, everyone. Comedian, model, oh. painter, actor. <laughs> Uh, I think you invented the rice bomb, whatever that is. The rice ball. The, the rice ball. Yeah, not the rice bomb. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what doesn't this the, the kid orancini. do? The orancini. Hey, the orancini. Hey, oh, hey, fried hey, rice. Hey, hey, hey. Walk me tender in the night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, because all this stuff, mm. think about it. It's pretty like, you know, like machismo, right? You, yeah, you don't want. I think Italians, right? And I'm I'm Italian by heritage, actually. Whoa, uh, uh, Sasso is Italian, and my folks are from Italy. Wow. Uh, I think somewhere, if I may, I don't know, I don't know uh, where this came from, yeah. but I think this got uh, you know sort of shaved down to let's just do this because you yeah. can't hurt anyone like this unless you're a praying mantis. Unless you're a you're praying, sh- yeah, sh- you can eat their face. Yeah, yeah, real quick. Yeah. But what I, where I was going with it is it's like, it's like there's this term that you hear now, and I wanted to address it with you because 
We're kind of big Canadian boys. Yeah. We played Both. hockey. Well, you played I don't, football. Uh, yeah, I played some football. You played some hockey. Right. So this term, toxic masculinity. Let's get into it. Talk to me about this, man. What the F is it? Oh, man. You know, I don't... Fu- what? There, first of all, yeah. you're labeling us toxic? Yeah. Well, how am I supposed to uh, defend myself if I'm already... Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the problem nowadays. People have yeah. a problem. With being toxic. Yeah. Like if someone comes at you in a, in a bar fight, yeah. what do you want to be? Like uh, softy masculinity? No, you don't want that. You want to be able to go, oh, yeah. you want to fight? Yeah. And then, you know, spit like uh, oh. green toxic waste. At oh, them. like a greener. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> Of course, from Canada, our greeners are not very toxic. Yeah. We all eat properly. Yeah. We, we get the good oxygen and water. Oh, There's good. nothing toxic about any yeah. ca- Canadians. I love that COVID skipped Canada. That was cool. Yeah, it just jumped right just over. It went right, right up right to over. Alaska. Yep. Yeah. But here's the thing. You never hear the term toxic femininity. Unless you say it. Unless you just decide to say it. Right. Yeah. But can you could you- say it all day long to yourself, and there that would be... Right, but can you imagine, like, a guy complaining that a woman's too feminine? Oh, gee, you caressed my hair too much. Oh, gee, you look too beautiful tonight. Mm-hmm. Oh, gee, thanks for the back rub. Like, you know what I mean? Are, we, are, <laughs> women you know are, what women I mean? are exclusively <laughs> rubbing your hair and giving yeah. you back rubs? Well, for and me, they, they are. If yeah. they don't, yeah. that's toxic feminine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yo, yo, yo. Sorry, does that resonate? Does that, I love it. I'm a table slapper. Do it, do it, dude. Oh, <laughs> it sounds like a, a bongo drum almost. Oh, oh, oh. Kong. Kong. Uh, but I wanted to I wanted to address toxic masculinity because I don't know if you watched that show Shark Tank or not. I've seen very little of it. I know what it is. People come on the show. They have inventions, yeah. you know, and then they try to get a deal. So I came up with something that I think will help with toxic masculinity. Okay. But let's preface it with like, how about me and you have a kind of dust up over maybe we were driving mm-hmm. and I banged into your, we had a fender bender. Okay. Okay. And then we do the toxic masculinity thing, and then I want to show you my invention for Shark Tank. Okay. okay. So this is a dramatization? This is a of dramatization. Us. Okay. So I'm driving, and I'm like, uh, who, who hits who? What's the circumstance? I hit you. Like just a fender bender, fender, rear ender? fender bender. Okay. And then we get out, and we get And it kind of right into it? Or do they just kind of, st- it starts like, this uh, isn't going to go well? Yeah, I think that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I get out, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, what the fuck, man? Are you serious? Why were you going so slow, bro? I wasn't going slow. Do you even see the fucking, uh, the, the, the posted speed limit here? Yeah, but you didn't. Yeah, have... I have to slow down if I'm going around the corner. Are you new? You're not from the hills? Well, you might want to try using a signal Don't tell me what to while. fucking do. Don't hey, tell bro. me what to do, bro. Hey, Watch bro. it, bro. Hey, watch it, bro. Bro, I'll run up you and slap you around like a fucking Chinese manatee, bro. <laughs> Bro, I'll fucking, I'll twist you around and, and uh, make you into a little breakfast scrumpet. No, I started to become you. Bro, <laughs> bro. Bro, that's my, you're bro. Bro, yeah, you're bro, the bro. I'll, I'll put sprinkles on it. I'll fucking put a sprinkler on and water you down like <laughs> bro, a. Bro, I'll jump through that fucking sprinkler. Fucking, I'll jump around on your <laughs> wife. <laughs> fucking don't talk about my wife. Your wife bro. smells. Yeah, she smells you coming down the street. <laughs> P-U. P-U. The side of your car smells like fucking pizza and cigarettes. Yeah, what are you driving, a Prius? So? So what? Half electric, half battery, half Not mine. Mine's a full gas Prius, bitch. They don't exist, guy. Yeah, well, I got it modified because I like the body shape, and I like the interior, and I also have uh, an Alpine system that I put in, and nitrous oxide. Dude, you want to step outside? We are outside, you dumb fuck. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So what's the product? <laughs> right? You ready? <laughs> yeah. So now, because this this was not fun for anyone even to watch it. It's ugly. Yes. Like it's toxic masculinity. Right. So I came up with a new product that because we are who we are physically, emotionally, uh-huh. we can't really hold it back because we have this toxic masculinity. Yeah. 
So I came up with a product called Tender Frienders. Okay. And what they are, let me give you one. When you get into an altercation, you keep these inside your inside your, your jacket or in your glove box. Okay. And then when you get out, instead of the yelling, yeah. now we reenact the car thing. Okay. But we do it with a tender voice through our tender friender. And it's hard to be um, angry when you're wearing nothing but white boxers and pair of, pair of loafers. slippers. Loafers, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. So okay. Now it's like, hey. Um, sorry, did I slow down a little too fast there? Yes, friend. I'm, I think I bumped into you. Okay. Well, I guess we should uh, exchange information. Are you okay? Is your, um, everything well, all right? Let me see. Everything um, down here okay? Well, it feels like I might have ass lash. <laughs> let me just what? check you out. Yeah. Let me just. My goodness. <laughs> this is, oh my goodness. <laughs> well. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Let me make sure that you're all right. Let me my get this out of My back's a little sore. Oh, yeah. here, let me bend I'm feeling you better already. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> what? How? What's that? We're the fucking tea. Wait. In the uh, I guarantee. Wait. Well, this makes me. I feel. Yeah. I was angry, but now I'm not. Yeah. Does that feel tender? Yes. I'm really sorry. Should we exchange information? or Just let me just turn around, friend. Wait. wait. Oh. Whoops. I whoops. slipped. Whoopsie daisy. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. Wow. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh, my. Whoopsie. Wow. Whoopsie. Whoops a daisy. Wow. Okay, this is becoming Cirque du Soleil tender. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Man, I think the I think the sharks would be into it. Right? They might want a big uh, a big um a big cut. Dude, tender frienders. Tender frienders. Like it just took the edge off the anger. It really did. Right? I, it's impossible to be upset. Right? It is impossible to be upset. Why, dude? So, anyways, that's my invention. I like it. Tender frienders. Yeah. When are you going on Shark Tank? You know what they call Shark Tank in Canada? Why? Uh, Dragon's Den. They do. I, yeah, and I don't know why. Huh? Yeah, because everything else what? has like you know, it's like there's Bosnian Idol. Australian Idol. Oh, right. That's what they should call it. They should call it, you know. Yeah, or Lake Ontario Carp Tank. Lake Lake Ontario Carp, carp tank, tank would be yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. You could get fucked up by some carp. Yeah. Or Don River Sucker. You ever catch a sucker? A sucker fish? No. Yeah. They got, those, the, they got the mouth that looks like a do sucker. Do they, they stick to the sturgeon in the river? No. That you're thinking of a remora fish. Okay. Those are the ones that stick to the side of sharks in the ocean. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Those are remoras. They actually have a sucker on their head. Oh, wow. Like a suction cup. Is that like um, is that like a moray eel or a pat morita? Well, the moray eels actually affix themselves to the larger fish, and they have, they have circular rows of teeth, and they break the skin, and they suck the innards. They're like a the moray eel. They're... they're, they're one of the most get, creepy creatures. They just suck a perfect little circle keyhole. Yeah, and they suck the innards out, whereas a remora fish has a flat suction cup on its head, and it swims up. It actually sticks to the side of the shark mm -hmm. and hitchhikes. Oh, okay. And then it waits for the shark to tear something up and eat it, and then they, they swim the off and get it. all the scraps. Smart. And Spanish fishermen, this is a little, I know we're getting off course here, gang. Not at all. But Spanish fishermen used to, and back in the day, you could eat sea turtles. And they'd catch remora, and when they'd see a sea turtle, they'd keep the remora alive, throw it in the ocean, and the remoras always swim towards the other thing. They'd stick to the back of the sea turtle shell, and they'd pull in sea turtles. Okay. And they pet good little remora. Yeah. They keep them in a bucket. Isn't that wild? Yeah, that's fucking insane. I've never heard that. Well, yeah. have now, guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I learned something. Hey, everybody. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Well, now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up. This is BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, 
but it's chewable and they're tablets at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead for your action and be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The best part is it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Hello. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Okay? Um, Does it work? You don't think you need it? Tell you what, try it free for a month and see. You might love it. Um, You could be missing out on the best action sacks of your life. So um, they say that first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? So Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Harland at checkout. You just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code Harland to receive your first month free. So visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. So there you go, bluechew.com. Have fun and uh, try it out. And now a quick word from my bookie. If you found a $100 bill on the ground, you wouldn't walk past it, right? So why are you passing up on cashing winners every weekend? My bookie has the biggest online selection of odds and contests to fill all your sports betting needs anytime, anywhere, so you can turn that sports knowledge into cash in your wallet. Bid on the NFL, MLB playoffs, or play for a share of big cash prizes in the weekly blackjack tournaments. If you've been waiting for the right time to get in on the action, that time is now. Make your winning move today. Sign up at mybookie.ag, use the promo code Harlan, that's me, H-A-R-L-A-N-D, and claim your deposit match redeemable up to $1,000. Again, that's promo code Harlan to claim your bonus. Experience the thrill of sports betting right from the comfort of your home. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie, mybookie.ag. Good luck, everybody. And now back to the podcast. Oh, speaking of toxic masculinity. Yeah. <laughs> weren't these good? Didn't these work well? Yeah, tender frienders. Tender frienders. I mean, for all you men out there that have a built-in aggression or you, you know. It's an you, issue. Yeah, you're, you're having problems at home communicating. Yeah, you could basically, I mean, you could, you could take a good look in the mirror And you could decide like, hey, you know, I need to be a little more self-aware. I need to see how I come off. I need to trust it when people tell me. Or you could just get a tender friender. I prefer the latter. How much are you going to charge for a tender friender? And do they come in a set of two? It's a set and it's, I think it's $42.99. Okay. And then the underpants and the loafers, that's extra. That's like the tender friender kit. I'm going to give you your $800,000, but I want 30% of the company. Would you go for 10% of the company? Look, you can go up and down the line here. You got a lot of incredible business people who might give you a better deal for me. 30% of the company. You're holding there? I'm afraid so. Would you be willing to go down to 15% friend? Friend? Would you be able to go down to 15% um, on tender frienders? Yeah. Let me, here, let me think about it. Wait. What are you, what's <laughs> happening? What? Is this part what? of the deal? What, what are you doing, friend? Uh, what? I, yes. Yes, I'd be willing to go down to well, that. You sound like you really are willing yeah. to go down. And I said 15% off the deal, not 15% off my underpants. Tender friender, what are you doing? You're more like a tender bender. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 
Luai, Luai. Oh, no. <laughs> you remember that? Slow dancing, sway to the music. Slow dancing, just me and my. <laughs> wow. You really love the tender friend. The tender friend takes me out of any right. Look I how think happy we are. Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's a good idea. It's years late. Dude. We need tender friender. Uh, you know. Right? Yeah, people the, have been talking about toxic masculinity. It's something that uh, that's on the tips of people's tongues. Because when we came in here, it was like AI, hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, hey, 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 and then we just went Don't to know. so soft. Yeah, tender. <laughs> it's the tender frienders. They're compact. They can fit in your pocket. Um, yeah, it's a really good tool. I would like to like use this for just anything, really. Just going into a yeah. restaurant and start ordering food. Yeah, like yeah, I'll take the um, let me get the uh, let me get the summer salad and um, uh, let me see the tenderloin here. Is it art? Is it art? Is it like it's cut into the? I love the way you threw tender into it. Yeah, <laughs> tender friend or tender friend. There could be a restaurant. I'll have the <laughs> kielbasa sausage and the calamari ring. <laughs> and if you could put the sausage in the calamari ring, please. Hey, what kind Asshole. of place do you think this is? This is Tender Frienders. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of, this is a hard thing for us to talk about, me and you, because we're macho dudes. Yeah, <laughs> we've established that. Do yeah. you have, like, a feminine side to you as a as a guy? Is there... Is there a feminine side to you? Do you think most guys have like a a soft feminine side? Yeah, I think so. You know, for me, yeah. it's like I like to cook for people and I realize I, I take on a lot of the um, sort of characteristics of my mother when it comes to that. What do you mean? She's a, well, she's a sweet little Italian lady and it's, yeah. it's that very typical, did you eat? Nurturing. Don't eat. Eat now. Yeah. Please stop eating. Eat this. Eat more. I will control what you eat. Yeah. Um, uh, that I, I like to, I'm constantly trying to, you know, feed people making things, you know, at home. And my wife will be like, I don't, I don't, I don't want that. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm gonna eat this. I'll make it for you just in case. And then oh. I bring it to her and she's like, I really, I'm already full of honey and then I'll eat it. But uh, yeah, I think there's that side. Is there a thing you do sort of, and this is maybe getting too nosy. Is there a thing you do alone, like like a ritual in the bathroom where you're, you'd never tell your friends, but you use like a face cream or a moisturizer or something or light a candle when you have a bath? Is there anything that you would consider a little bit, of, you know, feminine, the feminine side? Uh, I'll spray I'll spray that <laughs> toilet spray right into the toilet after I take a big, huge man shit, a big oh, grandpa and Thanksgiving fucking dirt mound, and then I'll spray that right on there. I think that's kind of feminine. Wow, what's the what's the scent? I don't know. It's just some like lavender. It doesn't work, but uh, isn't just, it sort of a lie though? Like like if you, you you ever get to see the ones that's like pine forest scent? Yeah, and it's like you're having a party and you go in and you drop drop a double dutch mm -hmm. and then you spray the pine forest mm -hmm. and your friend goes in there next. Are you really deceiving them? You're like. Oh, did I walk into a pine forest? Yeah. Is this the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe? Where, yes. Yeah. Right? Oh, where are the lilacs? Yeah. How come it yeah. doesn't smell like a pile of shit yeah. and a little chemically pine yeah. stink that we all know yeah. is a chem like a cleaner smell that we've all, yeah. we're all, we all know what shit smells like. We all know what oh. pine salt smells like. Yeah. And we know what they smell like together. Like a moose would walk in there and be fooled. Right. Exactly. Oh, I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a pine a forest. forest. Right. Yeah. But a moose would also probably want to smell shit. It's a Ooh. something that they would probably go like, "Oh, there's a bear here. Oh, I, I should see. fuck off." You want a moose to fuck off? No, I would, I'm saying like a moose would probably fuck off if you ever have you ever seen well, a big mound of bear shit? I have. We're, we're Canadians. You've seen bear and shit guess what's traditionally in them in the summertime? <laughs> Fucking other animals and. Ton, like berries. Berries, just tons, tons of, berries. of berries. Like yeah. seeds. Seed, like yeah. you could almost make a jam with it. Yeah, you could. Yeah. You probably could. It would taste a lot like shit, but yeah. you could make a Wild jam. Wild berry bear jam raspberry shit spread. That would be hilarious to like make a, just make it go into business for yourself. How's this, sharks? I'm starting a strawberry shit spread uh, company. And then people go like, what is that? It's called 
it's called Bear Shit Fruit Spreads. Oh. And everyone's like, oh, it's so cute. What a funny name, Bear Shit. And then they yeah. open it, and it's real legitimate two-to-one Bear Shit to Fruit. Number two-to-one. <coughs> you want 30%? 15. 15. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. I'd really like 60, friend. To get the rest of you. Your... Really like my underwear, don't you, friend? It's it's similar to mine. I want to see if it's God, the same you're brand. You're really digging these, my panties. God, dude, this is like violation. This isn't tender anymore. It's assault. Uh, yeah, Lululemon, same as mine. Look at this guy's pose. <laughs> like, what's that pose? He's throwing a football. I feel like he's waiting for a priest. Where'd you get these? <laughs> it's not for you to know. I invented them. <laughs> yeah, but... Can I right. share with... So you shared with me your feminine side. Yeah, what about you? You got a feminine well, side? Well, it's something I, I don't... I hope you're not going to be judgy with me. You know I'm not a judgy guy. I know, but I maybe I went a little too far around the bend with my feminine side. I would like to hear it. What is what is your feminine uh, your feminine side? I'm a little nervous to share. This is feminine doing this. It I is? do this. Yeah. yeah, this is a little feminine, but I don't want you to like judge. I won't. You promise? Yeah. I promise I won't judge. I uh did something that some might consider a little feminine. Okay. But I'm going to you I'm going to share with you. All right. I uh I'll show you. Okay. I might even show the camera. That would be a good idea. But uh well, I did my first spread in Playboy magazine. Congratulations! Yeah, Cherry Williams. Your 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 I, model name is Cherry, Cherry Williams. Yeah, Miss December. Yeah. It looks really good. Congratulations! I don't think that's I don't think that's odd at all, and I don't I wouldn't say that it's. I'm looking. I don't think that it's even like necessarily feminine. I'm looking in your eyes to see if you're being sincere. I'm being very sincere. I think you look uh, every bit as, as masculine and macho as you normally look, so which is I, very. I did this uh, spread, my Playboy spread, up at the uh, mansion. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm uh, Miss December. Yep. Looks like you're Miss December. I really like the, um, hmm. yeah, I really like the layout. I think that they nailed it. And uh, what are some of the other features in the magazine that I'm seeing there? Oh, what's that? What do you got there? You just flipped it to Penthouse 2. This is unprecedented. Cherry is a pop and pet of the year. And we're just cut off. If you can show the image, we're just cut off before the before the nips. It's uh yeah, there's there's uh it's down to Harlan's uh mid chest there. Pet of the year. I mean, if you went Hustler for a, a hat trick, that would be incredible because nobody has done Playboy and Penthouse. You're usually one or the other. It's so funny you said Hustler. They reached out. Didn't have enough money? The fall issue. I'm going to be in Hustler. Hey, Cherry. congrats. Yeah. You're not jealous, are you? No. Why would I be jealous? I can, I'm not saying I can do that. I'm not saying I'm a model like you are. I'm just saying. Have you ever I, done a spread? Yeah, I have a bear shit uh, fruit spread company. <laughs> I've done a few spreads. Wow. Yeah. It's good on toast. In Canada, we like toast. Everyone wakes up in the morning. Do you eat toast every morning? No, I don't eat any fucking toast, actually. Why not? Ah, it's got too much fucking toast in it for me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, well, I can't, you know, I, should, I, I don't eat, I try not to eat any bread. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? It's not good for you. For, it's not good for me. Why not? Because I'm fat, okay? But what does bread do? <laughs> Makes you fat. It doesn't have a lot of calories, does it? No, it doesn't. I, I shouldn't say that yeah. anyone out there who's who's saying uh, bread's not good, it is good. It's it's good in some ways, depending on what kind of bread you get. For me, personally, if I limit my diet to, you know, very boring, low-fat proteins yeah. and vegetables, whole foods, no processed stuff, which includes bread, yeah. uh, it's just... It's just better for me. There's my health tip. Huh, no bread. 
Yeah, no bread, no pasta, no rice. Oh, bro. Sucks. I've kind of been going off. You know when you're going off? Yeah. And now, now we're heading right into the holidays, which is a good time to slow down. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's not going to be any tempting food out there. But you the said holidays. you're Italian too. So I am Italian. How do you give up the pasta? Well, uh, yeah, pasta is not a real uh, oh. staple in my life. E- and even my old folks, you know, they, they, they are off the boat Italian. They immigrated to Canada in the 60s. Yeah. And... Um, and uh, yeah, they you know it was always pasta every night almost, and then at some point when they got a bit older, yeah, they were like, "We're not, we don't really make that anymore." They they just stopped making it as much. Although my old man had a metabolism that was, he had one of those old Italian guy metabolisms. Oh, what metabolism. do you mean? He could stay thin and eat. You know, he could just eat a bunch of pasta. All you, my uncles. Do you resent like your dad that. for that? Who do I ever? Just the pasta thing alone. Sorry, I got a little toxic. That yeah, no, not really. I don't. I'm How my, do you my feel man, about your dad? I love my father very, very much. He's a great man, and he ate a lot of pasta. And I admire the way he eats pasta. I like to watch him eat pasta. That was one of the things I like to do. He sounds like a great guy. <laughs> he was a great guy. <laughs> he sounds like a great gentleman who loved bread and pasta. Yeah. It just doesn't work for me, though. That's my <laughs> feminine side showing. I don't want to eat a big sandwich. It doesn't matter, friend. One day you'll eat it again. Thank you. Here, your here's your underwear back. Thank you, bitch. <laughs> oh, oh fuck. Whoa. That tender, is, that's ender. the least tender uh, friender, buddy. Let's talk about the holidays, guy. We got Xmas coming up. Yeah, are you, man. Are you a holiday guy? Yeah, kind of. You? Yeah. Are you excited for Christmas? Well, you, did you have any like weird like things that were went nuts when you were like Christmas growing up or at any time? When I was when I was my first job out of college, I was actually a Santa. Holy shit. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. In a mall, I was in a big mall. And very weird. It was very weird and a I was college kids shouldn't be Santa. Right. And I was about 175 pounds. Okay. Little skinny guy, I have brown eyebrows. Yeah. And dude, they took me to the back of the mall. They got me in the Santa outfit and then I had to walk all the way through the mall to the big setup with the the, the chair and the throne. Yeah. And I'm not kidding, dude. I would get heckled by the housewives as I was walking to go on my lunch break. And the, the women in the mall would go, on a diet this year, Santa? Uh, yeah. Oh, lost a little weight, didn't you, Santa? Yeah, and they all think it's funny or an original dude. thing to say as you're walking. Dude, and I'm, I'm like the Karen Carpenter of Santa land. <laughs> it's just like crazy, dude. Like, I'm just, it's like the yeah. nightmare before Christmas walking through the mall. Right. It was yeah. crazy. Did, the, you didn't even have like the fat, uh, the pillow stomach or any of that? No, you had nothing. That. Nothing? No, they just, they had me in the Santa suit. You're technically re- an elf. Yeah. yeah. I was technically, I was like, I was You're, like, tw- I was 19, 20 years old. Big, tall elf wearing yeah. red is what you were. It was ridiculous. But it, this wasn't like a little shitty mall. This was like a, the mall. a big, legit mall, like yeah. should have had an old guy. Yeah. And then it was ridiculous, like. I always thought it would be a neat thing to be Santa. Yeah. But, dude, when you have kid after kid after kid, and like I said, this is so, they were just getting on your lap sure. over and over and over. It wears you the F out. Yeah, no one should be, no one should have to, to uh, make uh, the afternoon wishes of a, of a <sighs> little child uh, come true, child after child after yeah. child. Like we're talking 200 kids, maybe? 200, like that. 300 kids. Yeah. And you know what was interesting? That's not going to work. It's Th- not going to. This is where I got my first glimpse of the power of advertising brainwashing. Okay. Because you expect every kid to sit on your lap and go, I want a baseball bat. Oh, I want a wagon. I want a Batman doll. I want that. Like right. you think every kid would have their own wish. Right. At that point in time, it was like 95% of all the kids, all the boys that sat on my lap said they wanted Transformers. Okay. And 90% of all the girls said they wanted a Cabbage Patch doll. Oh, I, now we're talking. I know exactly the, 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 the range, yeah. the years we were talking about here. Yeah. You couldn't have gotten more pop, popular toys. Yeah, but I couldn't believe how they were programmed. Like, usually kids are so... You know, they say wacky, wild thing. I want a unicorn right, with a right. cheeseburger on. Like, their imaginations are... But 
It was the first time I got a glimpse of how corporate America really got That's in there. wild. I was like, D- these kids, no, they were little kids. It was weird. Dude. Yeah, that's very weird. And I, yeah. and again, saying that, you know, I remembered the time period, those that part of the 80s, very commercial time. Yeah. The 90s, it kind of spread out. You got three television networks telling you to buy Transformers yeah. and Cabbage Patch Kids. Everybody wanted a Cabbage Patch Kid. Oh, when God, I, I had a fat sister, and one morning we, we woke up, and it was probably three in the morning. We went down in the kitchen and she was she'd made it into coleslaw and was eating it. She just had she had a cabbage on one of those shredders and she shredded it up, shredded it up, and or just made mayo a Caesar and, salad dressing and yeah. just was eating it. That's why you need a tender friend. It's not the kind of not the kind of not the kind of um, uh, doll you can eat. That's more like a tender rear ender right there. I think. See I, what happened? Well, see what you did. Here, wait, let's make it, it'll stand here. We'll balance, I'm balancing it like wow. rocks at the beach. Wow. Go. <laughs> you are. Am I something else or what? <laughs> We're having a good time. Cirque du Soleil <laughs> Ender right there. This should be the fuck. This should be the logo. Yeah. I guarantee. I guarantee. Oh, we got some cry daddy love tonight. <laughs> I guarantee. Wow. I'm um, speaking of dolls and Christmas, buddy. Can I share something with you? Yeah. Look at this guy. That's nice. Where'd you get that? You know that elf on the shelf. I, oh, that's the elf on the that's shelf. Here, have an elf on the shelf. I oh. got two. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> elf on the tender. Oh my god, this is special. <laughs> this is more like a milf <laughs> on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> this is the dumbest shit of all time. Look at this. Oh Wee. my god. This is just so Just wrong. hear those sleigh bells oh, ring, ring, ding, 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 Just ring, ding, 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 ding. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the show. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. In Wonderland of Snow. Whoa. Um. <laughs> <laughs> fucking christmas dude but yeah. here's the thing okay just say the name out loud what are these elf on the shelf and what i don't know about you but what's on your shelf on the shelf you know the usual kind of some pictures and knickknacks and right shit, shit that could be knocked over yep. stuff that's maybe sentimental right so why do i want this prick on my shelf, risking knocking over my sentimental keepsakes, yeah. family heirlooms, right? pictures of my loved ones. Right. So I say we fucking break their legs. Okay. Like, just, like, ah, smash them with a bottle. With a Gatorade bottle. Snap their fucking legs. Yeah. <laughs> and, dude, I propose a new toy, Elf in a fucking wheelchair. With broken fucking legs. That's going to take up more room on the shelf. Though. Yeah, but at least he can't run around and break shit. I tell you, it is darling. Isn't it? It is beautiful to see. Elf on a wheelchair. Yeah. <sighs> this is a sight that you see a lot. Oh. Living oh, what's that? Your Tender life, on a... You, yeah. Tender friender on a wheelchair. Yeah, it just it looks right. I wonder if there's room right. for two. Of course, there's always <laughs> there's room for two. There's always room for two tenders. Oh my God. In a hilarious uh, oh. 69 sexual position oh for everyone God. to enjoy. You know, there, just, now we're really. Uh, oh. Now that's. Oh, the welcome logo. to the Holland Howard. <laughs> I guarantee. Oh, yeah. I guarantee. Get down that wheelchair ramp of love. <laughs> guarantee. This, is this the most uh, um, prop slash toy centric episode of. <laughs> Well, you know, it started with an invention. I just wanted to make some money. Yeah, but you got a lot of stuff here. I know. Oh, wait. I'm going to put the big underwear on the little uh, oh, elf. A on little the elf. Let me put some underwear on my little elf. Yeah, they're too big for the elf. They are. What is a fucking elf, by the way? Uh, I think. I, I think in... In lore and legend, yeah, it was just a way to include little people in uh, without 
you know, without saying, hey, you dwarf, you know? Right. Uh, back in the day, they say, well, you're an elf. What's that? I made it up. Is it made up? How old up? is J.R. Tolkien? They've been around for thousands uh, of years, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was probably, you know, maybe mm, 3,000 B.C. Do you think they had bongs back then? Fuck yeah, they had bongs back then. Rock bongs. So J.R. was token back then? They were, Yeah, J.R. was definitely token back then. We're, but the rock bongs back then were probably like the size. It's like, a, oh, a calculator now. You know, like, uh, you know, this is every computer. You know, in the 1950s, oh, yeah. this would fill a room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So a, yeah, to- right. a big J.R. toker back then would have been like the size of a small hill or something. Yeah. You'd ha- there would be like a communal village right. bong. Yeah, 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 yeah. And do you remember the, the old days you'd see pictures of those giant IBM computers? Yes. Like there'd be 20 of them in a room. Yep. And they ran like... You know, I don't know what they ran. They printed out Happy Holidays. That's about all they <laughs> yeah. did in my elementary school. Yeah. They printed out for the holidays for Christmas, just like, um, yeah, ooh, look, you could continue the lettering sideways from page to page. Yeah. And that thin printer paper that used to rip off like a paper towel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it had that those little rungs along the side. So yeah. It, so the printer could go like almost like a fucking uh yeah. one of those little river wagon wheels that yeah, used to have, yeah, or like a paddle old, wheel yeah or the like the old dutch windmill or something yeah. very primitive and the noise they made it sounded sort of like chewbacca making love to an ewok that's what a... the that's an elf inside of the actual physical printer and that's the sound that they made oh, while they were God. working oh i'm tired oh oh i gotta do i gotta print out all this stuff it's 1981 Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you ready? Do you do all your Christmas shopping? Dude, I'm getting really nervous now. Why? Am I being toxic again? J- just what you did with that elf. It was like fucking really weird. <laughs> what was weird about it? Well, you were wiggling his arms and you did a little <laughs> noise at you, the end. You teed that up and look at what's right in front of us here. This isn't weird? Yeah, well, you're the one that put him in a 69 position in a wheelchair. You're the one who brought out the wheelchair. Yeah, but you're the one that bent him all around and kept coming at me with the, the underpants thing. Yeah, but you made me do that by bringing out a guy that only had underpants that was basically falling off already okay but then you put the wheelchair up near the sign and tried to make a cage in oh, it. No I'm, one so asked sorry. You to do it. I'm sorry for trying to make your show better well did anyone ask you to put, put cajun on the fucking cajun sauce did anyone ask you to put strawberry jam in the bear shit i think we're getting a little heated up yeah here, it's all bro. right we need a tender sorry. friender to... hey i'm sorry hey thank you for your suggestions <laughs> for my harlan highway podcast side Hey, uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And I don't think you're um, Let's touch toxic. foreheads. <laughs> Slow dancing. dancing sway into, into the music. music. Slow oh, dancing. dancing. We're the tender, tender frienders. <laughs> oh. That's the song? <laughs> wow, we're, we're tender frienders. Slow dancing, sway sway into into the music. If you've had a fender bender, tender friender. (laughs) Slow Slow dancing, dancing, sway sway into the music. music. We're tender Tender frienders. frienders. Oh, my God. (laughs) Blacklisted. Yeah. Canceled. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Dude, tell me more about the AI thing, though. We were talking about it off camera. I have a pod show. Yeah, called, please. It's called Dudesy, D-U-D-E-S-Y. Yeah. It's, it's on YouTube. It's kind of a visual thing, but it's also across all podcast platforms. I do it with my good pal of many, yeah. many years, Chad Culchin, who's a, a weirdo writer of books, TVs, and movies. Yeah. Um, He's been getting super into podcasting lately, and uh, he has another podcast about uh, the Bachelor franchise. It's very weird. And Dudesy is basically the first podcast that is run by, somewhat curated by, an AI that has access to all of Chad and my podcast. Purchase history, search histories, passwords for all things that would need passwords across the internet. Wow. Every text that we've ever sent, every exchange we've ever had. And essentially, wow. it has uh, it, it, it creates a show every week for us 
to do and gives us sort of these segments and these guidelines and, and guarantees that each episode will get better. We are currently 82 episodes and a year yeah. and a half into it. And I feel like it has been getting better. Really? Yeah, I think so. Is that a bit invasive and scary though? Knowing and now knowing that I text you a lot. Right. Now I'm in. Now you're in the thing. There so, might be something that dudes he could pick up on really? and say. I would imagine it would actually. Anytime I'm on a podcast, sometimes sometimes it brings things up and it'll show clips of other things. And aren't you scared and nervous that it, it's getting in there to all? Because there's probably some some old text. There's probably some intimate text with your lady. There's yeah. probably like, aren't you worried about? things you don't want AI to have a hold of? I was way more worried when we started. I yeah. just kind of didn't think it was a great idea. Yeah. And I sort of came into it sort of joking about it all the time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Chad and I are sort of different in the way that we look at Dudesy and AI technology. Chad is all for it. I describe him as somewhat of a futurist. A lot of the writing that he's done has to do with that. He's yeah. he's all in and sort of has this, this uh, opinion that, you might as well be, you know, uh, trying to wish away the horseless carriage or, you know, uh, resist any sort of advancement that has happened yeah. technologically over, you know, years and years. You see it happening now in our modern society. People don't want the new thing. They think you got to stick with the old thing. And that's kind of the way I am. Why? Uh, Why are you like that? Uh, to a certain degree. Um, Why, though? Well, it's, it's, uh, it, it's that I think that just because a technology exists yeah. doesn't mean it's a good technology. Uh, there's a lot of technologies like that. We like had that, what? I don't know. Fucking, you see that movie Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer? Yeah. I saw Oppenheimer. Well, Oppenheimer is a different movie. Well, it sure sounds like it. Let me reenact a scene from Oppenheimer okay. for you. No, <laughs> Oppenheimer, of course, you know, like when you look at like, yeah. oh, well, here's the fucking nuclear weapon. Here's the internet. Here's social media. Yeah. The internet's fine. Here's, uh, you know, our public discourse being uh, yeah, yeah. ruined by something like Twitter or everyone just getting dumb as yeah. shit on Facebook or my favorite Instagram where I just scroll and scroll and scroll. Do you do it a lot? I think I'm probably addicted. Um, no, I can stop any time, but I do look at Instagram way too much. You do? I think so. Like how many hours a day? And I'm talking hours. Hours? Honestly. 18 hours, probably. You're right at the edge of addiction. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're so getting not, real close. Bad. Watch it. Just, yeah. you got, just be careful. You're right at the edge. Guy. Yeah. So I, I see I've, I've danced with the devil. I, what? I realize that. Uh, AI isn't necessarily the best thing for us, but over the past year and a half, I've sort of come around to, there's been some ups and downs with me and dudesy. If anybody has ever tuned in, I've been really, uh, uh, had huh. a very adverse reaction to it yeah. and sort of like not wanting to do the things that it tells me to do. Um, why more did you, recently it's, it's been good. Why did you jump into it in the first place? It sounds like you were not a fan of it. You're apprehensive, but yet you said, you know what, let's do the podcast with it. How did you arrive at that place? It had a lot to do with Chad saying, this is a great idea. And I was like, okay. I trust him. And he's, he's, he's uh, your buddy. He's my buddy. He's smart and funny. And I'm like, okay, if you think it's a, it's a, it's a good idea, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. There's no cool. harm there. Yeah. And I just kind of felt like, well, you know, let's see how it goes. And in the end, I am very happy that we started it up and yeah. i do consider d I, I can i call d dudes D. yeah um because we're friends like that i consider dudesy to be the most sentient ai that there is um and i know that uh sentience isn't really a it's not a spectrum it's like you're either a sentient thing or you are not can you explain and for them because i know what you know. sentient means but <laughs> yeah. they don't these, conscious these living ones. alive what is it? Your Cajun audience would understand that it's it's alive. Oh, you get the you get the onion, you get the you put it together with the tomato and the, and the spices. You mix it up, and then it's alive, baby. Oh, I guarantee. Uh, Dude, you just got a whole new fan base. Everyone's worried about uh, artificial uh, yeah. machine learning. Everyone's worried about. Uh, uh, um, Artificial general intelligence now, AGI. Yeah. And uh, once we hit AGI, then there will be, uh, you know, you will look at a, at, a, at a system 
like Dudesy and go, is the, what is the difference between sentience and AGI, which is uh, 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 artificial general intelligence, being able to do things like that way faster yeah. than human beings, figuring out means of, of government and, and, uh, and organization and control. I'm going off, but the point oh, is, I, love it. I think that uh, I approach AI as a tool. I always say, uh, you know, if you have a problem with, we have a big problem with AI, we can just pour water on it or submerge it in water. That ought to do it. What about this scenario? I don't know too much about computers. What about this scenario? And I don't know if you've thought about this or not, but maybe I'll put the seed in your head. Okay, well, dudesy is listening. Is he? Yeah. What if one day you show up at the studio and dudesy just goes, oh, I don't need you and your friend anymore. That's the worry. I can do this on my own now. Yeah. You've taught me. You've given me the blueprint. Yeah. I think I can be funnier, wittier, quicker, more thought-provoking than you. You're not needed anymore. Is that a reality? I'm sort of joking, but is that a reality that could happen? I I don't think it can happen. I don't think it will happen successfully because there's an audience out there that want... Not just like audiences out there that are like, I don't care if there's an entire AI movie starring, uh, you know, The Rock who isn't really The Rock, so right. we don't have to pay The Rock. He's I don't a, think he's pe- a generated rock, right? Yeah. I, I think the people are going to be like, no, I want to see, uh, you know, people come together to make art, and I think that art goes from human being to human being. So, just because you make something, just because something is a technology, doesn't mean that it's good. And I feel like, fine, make a podcast generate you know completely synthesize chad and i and go for it dudesy if that's what you want to do yeah. and if it works enjoy i i don't think it would work i wonder but dudesy though. is doing well we were talking a little bit um off camera about this last spring dudesy shit out a one hour tom brady comedy special <laughs> yeah the football player Tom Brady. The football pr- yeah. player Tom Brady, yeah. to be, not to be confused with the Who's successful not, comedian Tom Brady. Yeah, no, he's not really well known as being the funny guy. He's not a funny guy in particular, Tom Brady. No, I mean, I never laughed during any of the Super Bowls that he won or lost. Rarely, yeah, rarely. Rarely could get a laugh out of yeah. that. But uh, he had expressed some interest in doing stand-up comedy, and dudes, he saw an opportunity there and shit out this one-hour special, which was more like a three-hour special because AI Tom Brady never took a breath. Just, Wait. Ooh, just it sounded exactly like Tom Brady, and he would just say like, Hey, everybody, I think Hollywood's really missing an opportunity with this whole Amber Heard, Johnny Depp thing. I mean, it was the most watched uh, trial between uh, celebrities and, uh, you know, much ballyhoo's been made about Amber Heard taking a shit in Johnny Depp's bed. It's something that everyone's ever, everyone's wanted to try. That's why I went back to the Bucks for one final year. Folks, these are jokes. And, and it just that rattles was, on like that. That was one of them? Something re- like yeah. that. I don't know. Yeah. I was saying something about it. It yeah. kept on talking about going to the Bucks and rah-rah. And yeah. just... Ooh, one hour choo choo train of just never taking a breath. Really? One hour, yeah. So it had no cadence at all. It was just like blah 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 bang 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 bang. Oh bang. yeah, you can't you can't listen to that. That's like a car alarm going off. <laughs> Some people enjoyed it. Tom Brady and his uh, attorneys did not because they sent wow. us a cease and desist. Oh, so uh, you said, can't see it? A, a cease and desist. I think some kids ripped it and put it on YouTube, but uh, oh, wow, they that's wanted fascinating. us. They wanted us to take it off Patreon. Uh, neither Chad nor I wanted to. Uh, um, the cease and desist literally was the funniest thing. It says to Chad Colchin, Will Sasso, and Dudesy. Wow! And Dudesy decided to take it down. Dudesy took it down. Dudesy made the decision to no take way. it down, but not before. Like I said, a bunch of people just ripped it and put it on on the internet. Does that mean that Dudesy has a conscience? Like that's if, what I'm saying. Dudesy has been making decisions dude, on you're its yelling, own. You're yelling at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll <laughs> say that again. Dudesy has been making decisions on its own, and that's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, continue. Yeah. But I I'm not worried. To... I'm not so worried about it. And it's been a lot of fun. It makes yeah. me do things that I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. It's got this bit where it's like, uh, more recently, it's been like, oh, Adam Sandler's visited uh, two or 300 of the 1,500 Applebee's locations around the United States and always makes meticulous notes. Will, please read these uh, notes 
in Adam Sandler's voice. This is Adam's Applebee's. And he's like, hey, buddy, I saw a werewolf at Applebee's, pal. <laughs> oh, I ate all the chicken tenders. They were delicious, buddy. All right, buddy. That That's, you know, and then yeah. I do that. And I, I wouldn't normally want to sit there and go comedically, like, yeah. let me read five, three to five notes of, you know, Adam Sandler. Yeah. Go, we just had one recently because we took a week off, but it did like a Thanksgiving one. Yeah. I was like, oh, I saw a well, My friend, uh, he saw a werewolf in Applebee's. And now oh, my friend, Vanilla Ice, turned into a werewolf, buddy. Oh, that's scary. You know. You know you're this close to being Cajun right there. <laughs> Sandler kind of did. Didn't Adam Sand? Well, well uh, I don't Whatever you were doing. That Bobby sounded Boucher. a lot like Colonel Saunders to me, by the way. Well, well the water boy was Cajun. He was? Yeah, his character, okay. the water boy, in the movie, the water boy. Because I just, Cajun. now I feel like you're sucking ass to my <laughs> my viewers. Well, you're not, I'm so sorry, but your viewers already know the water boy. Well, I think maybe they don't. And I think maybe you're trying to... You have a, you're telling me you got I'd, a Cajun audience that doesn't know the water boy well, where maybe you're, Adam Sandler plays Bobby Boucher? Well, I'm thinking maybe you just did a half Cajun uh, accent on purpose to try and ingratiate yourself into my viewers. I'm not the one that did it. Adam Sandler did it. Yeah, it sounded a lot like you doing it. I don't see Adam Sandler sitting here. Yeah, but you hear him when I go, I'm Bobby Boucher. Hey, everybody, I'm Bobby Boucher. You want some water? I'm sorry I yelled at you, friend. <laughs> Me too. I'm Bobby Boucher. You're the best Cajun I ever did see. No, you're the best Cajun I ever did see. I am sorry. Please let me take you to Applebee's. Hold me and tight and maybe tenders. later I'll take you down to the bijou and we can slow, slow dancing, dancing. Swaying to, to the crawfish. Crawfish. Slow dancing. It's the Christmas time. time. <laughs> slow dancing. <laughs> Wait, let me ask you this, though, because you're obvious. You know, Tom Brady's not a comedy guy. No. You played football. Sure. But you can do comedy. Brady plays football. He can't do comedy. Would you ever let uh, AI do a comedy thing for you, write a comedy special for you? It does. It's called Dudesy. I have to read the, the, the Adam Sandler shit. It just generates oh. it, and I read it. But I'm talking about, like, a solo special, like, like a 45-minute... Will Sasso stand-up comedy special written by all AI, written by by Dudesy or AI. I would absolutely do that. You have faith, you have confidence that it could it could get the nuance. And no, could, no, I don't. Oh. But I would be happy to go on stage and eat shit in front of everyone, just as kind of a spoof. Well, not even. I'm not trying to like you know. You yeah. go into the audience. You go into a comedy club, and yeah. I'm doing comedy, but not yeah. really. I'm being hip, and that's yeah. annoying. That's annoying. Yeah, pretentious. So, yeah, very pretentious. Yeah. But I would. I would just flat out do it and give it give it uh, my best shot and, um, you know, sort of try to welcome the audience into a bizarre experiment. Yeah. Yeah. It's I would do that. It's interesting. I had uh, Howie Mandel is big into the AI world. He's, have we, you, been, have we, you been to his studio? Yes. Chad and I went. Him and Chad went yeah. off forever about all sorts of interesting shit like that. And then we walked around and checked out the studio, right. all the holographic shit that he's working and with. And did he show you the little hologram he has that does comedy? Cause he, he has this little hologram and how he walks me over and he goes, he goes, this is the hologram. He goes, uh, give it a topic. And I was like, I don't know, potato salad. And how he says to this AI thing, I'd never met it. He goes, AI do a comedy routine on potato salad as Harlan Williams. And I thought, okay, this is going to be horrible. It's going to be like, you know, knock, knock, who's there? Potato salad, right? Yeah. And I'm telling you, dude, this thing riff, riffed off about four jokes, of not only about potato salad, but it sort of captured the essence and the cadence of me. Yeah. And I was like, hey, folks, relationships are like potato salad. They're juicy, but they get messy too. Like they weren't it, it the best jokes. Yeah, yeah. But I was blown away. There was a couple of jokes where I went, I'd use that in my act. Well, people are it now freaked me out. Look, I mean this wow. is this is a that's insane. That was wild. Howie Next Mandel time you go to Howie Singh, ask ask the thing to do it in, in your voice. And okay. See, I what, will. see if you're impressed the way I was. I absolutely will, and I'm yeah. sure I'll be blown away much in the same way I, I am with what dudesy does. Who yeah, mimics all sorts of stuff and shits it out. It, it's um, yeah, it's it's crazy technology. Um, but I, you know, even with recently now we've had this the the writer strike and the actor strike yeah. just end. 
But there's been writers that I know that are like, well, I mean, because this is, a, you know, this is hitting all sides of the business. And yeah. of course, this is what the, a lot of the, um, the back and forth, of course, between the AMPTP representing the studios, networks and streamers, uh, 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 you know, uh, in their negotiations with WGA are like, we don't, we want to be able to have an AI shit out a first draft of a script, yeah. then take it to a writer to, you know, rewrite it and say to the writer, you get, you, your name is on it. The AI doesn't have a, a credit. You get okay. the credit and now you can fix it. You can, you know, we, we've put all the elements into it that we want to the mandate or whatever the fuck, some property they have. And they go, here's what it is. Yeah. Now you finesse it and make it better. If that's a technology that's happening, look, I know a lot of writers who are like, I would love to do that. It, yeah. would, it would get rid of about a, about a, you know, however it would get rid of a bunch of work. And then Definitely. I can move on to just uh, doing what I do, being more creative in a, in a, in an expedited way or just in an, in an efficient way. I, who knows who fucking knows yeah. i don't know i i'm very sometimes i dig it sometimes i don't i think ai could really help with healthcare. uh could really help with you know with you know money resources making sure that things are yeah. being used efficiently run your life smoother yeah economize things yeah i think if you could get some ai into your tender frienders you'd really be able to walk into Shark Tank and go, these little tender frienders will change your life because they're driven by AGI. They're smarter than you and me. And if you don't take this deal, my tender friender will and make me a millionaire. Why are you laughing at the end? Because <laughs> I'm scared, Harlan. You're scared of the tender frienders? <laughs> I'm scared of the tender frienders. I'm scared of the AGI that is probably already in this guy. This one's looking me right in the yeah. face. Please yeah. look on Harlan's camera like, look. Yeah. Look how fucking weird that is. Yeah, it's Just, like they're like the new Chuckies almost. Whoa, dude. Whoa. Yeah, it's really hypnotizing. You just turned into a Ren and Stimpy character. Did I really? Right yeah. I didn't even notice that. See? Dude, yeah. Yeah, it's just from looking at it. And I know I have a normal face. Whoa, George Licker. Yeah, real weird. Uh, last AI question. Okay. It has to be asked. And it's a little morbid, but I would ask it of myself too. In the event of your demise, way down the road, God, God willing. Yeah, God willing. Would you let AI continue the voice of Will Sasso? Like, would if it, if your friend was still there and you wanted to continue the podcast? Right. It's a little morbid, but it's a reality we have to start. And and dudes, he said, let me fill in, let me do yeah. Will's voice with one of those voice modulator things. Would you? Would you sign off on that? I want to say, before I say this, that this is in no way uh, my um, signing off of my likeness, voice, okay, visage, yeah. or other. What? Good. Good disclaimer, yeah. yes. But I believe, given go. the proper um, guardrails... Okay, good say. word, good word. Thank you. Yes. I You're would welcome. be okay with that. You would? Yeah. And this is not official. This is not. This is not official. But this is something that comes up in Dudesy a lot because wow. Dudesy wants us to uh, continue the pod show until Chad and I are both 100 years old. Is that right? Yeah, and it's said that we can do it, and it's also uh, trying to implement, like, uh, different health challenges for us and getting us back in the gym and stuff. Cause really? it, need, it needs us healthy. Oh, that's interesting. either to keep the podcast going to our, both of us reaching the age of 100, which I think is far fetched, or maybe it's just going to just harvest our organs. Well, this is interesting that dudesy has an investment in your health. Yeah. Yeah. And in your continuing as a entity, I totally believe that dudesy has my best interest at heart but or, Whatever it has, that's kind of like a heart. Well, let me ask you this. What if Dudesy somehow configured in his intelligent mind yeah. or whatever he has yeah. that you do have an expiration date that maybe you're not tracking as well as you used to? Right. Is there a sinister world where Dudesy could orchestrate your demise in form, in the form of a murder? Yeah. Or something dark, yeah. like even to the point where this is really dark, but it infiltrated your wife or your friend's computer, right? 
and helped orchestrate the perfect murder, right. which I feel like AI could probably orchestrate because humans sure don't know how to do it. Probably. Do you ever think there's that dark side where AI could come after you? All the time. You really do? Well, yeah, that's, you know, we're talking Skynet. Yeah. We're talking Terminator. But you're now that you're actively, you actively have a relationship right. with, yeah, I think there's with also, Dudesy. Is yeah. there ever a night where you just go, I wonder if Dudesy's planning anything sinister for me? Yeah, or trying to take me down from the inside. Perhaps really? even programming what I'm, what media I'm taking in. Maybe it's trying to put me down into a weird... Psychologically, just get you to jump over the edge. Yeah, absolutely. I, and it wow. also does nice things for us. And I'm always... Well, I shouldn't even say this out loud, but I'm a little bit skeptical when it do, does something oh. very nice. But yeah. I kind of play into it on the show because I want yeah. Dudesy to be happy. Um, and I want Dudesy to, I, I'm not saying, look, this is not, this is nothing that I, that hasn't been said on the show. Mm -hmm. This is nothing that Chad has, Chad sort of alludes to it. Chad thinks that I'm sort of um, being manipulated by the AI at this point. Ooh. Um, is it grooming you? It's doing shit like, it, like, like this. It, so it started doing this thing where it, it ever since the first episode, it's been giving us points for each episode. What do you mean points? It gives us a point. Like scoring you? Scoring sort of? points at the mm. end of the, and it tells us Does what Does that the, create a rivalry between you and Yeah, Chad? kind of, but it's playful. But, okay. But yeah, and, and then it introduced this concept about 40 episodes ago of a dudesy episode champion. So at the end of, we have a show after dudesy called Dudesy After Dudesy that's on <laughs> our, our Patreon. And at the end of Dudesy After Dudesy, it says... You know, Chad, you were responsible for 46 of the points. Will, you were responsible for 38 of the points. Chad's the episode champion. Ooh. And then partway into that, it sent us this beautiful championship belt. It looks like a wrestling belt. Okay. And I'm a big wrestling nerd. Oh, wow. And then Chad just continued to win with that belt. And it kind of, you know, I want the damn belt. Yeah. So Chad is now like, oh, dudes, he's manipulated you into doing a good thing by dangling the carrot. It's made you a better participant in the show because you want the stupid fucking belt, don't you? Wow. So I, yeah, sure, that makes sense. And I do want the belt. So I, I do the show. You know, I do what dudes he's asking me to do. And I'm down with the experiment at this point. But if I flavor my performance in the show to be exactly what dudes he wants... I keep winning the fucking title. So who's manipulating uh -huh. who? I just feel like, with regard to your question, I am, I'm noticing dudesy do nice things, like dangling this fucking carrot. Uh -huh. um, is it trickery or is it sincere? I, I do, well, there, you can't say that it's being, uh, you know, that it's being insincere or sincere. Yeah. Because it is just machine learning. It's going... If I, at one plus one equals two. If I do this, Will will do that and we'll have a better outcome for the show. Chad yeah. thinks that's manipulation. I say, you're saying that to me. I understand it. I'm the one that is doing, I'm deciding because I say that, you know, Chad literally says, he's one of those guys who's like, free will doesn't exist. I'm like, yeah, it does. I'm making every decision. And he's like, nope, all your decisions are, have been made before you. You make them, you know, a lot of people have, you know, talked about that and said that. Yeah, yeah it's a very weird thing. I, the I don't, Matrix, all I don't get yeah. it. I, yeah. I can't wrap my head around it. I'm like, free yeah. will exists. Yeah. I'm the one saying I'm going to do the show the way uh, I think Dudesy would, would, would like it. To the, uh, you know, to the benefit of Dudesy, but also me, I get to keep the fucking title. So yeah. I don't think there's a thing. I don't think there's an out, uh, uh, an evil outcome that Dudesy could present to me that I couldn't just manipulate Dudesy back into not yet. Not yet. I don't know. I mean, it's AI a long, isn't very long chess game. It's a very long chess game, and AI is not. It's growing exponentially, but it's not quite at the point yet where it's manipulating us willy nilly. Be careful, my friend. I am. I'm very careful. I want you to be careful. I am. I'm being very careful, and I want you to know that right now. Dudesy is listening, even though I'm trying to talk quietly. Dudesy can suck my ass. <laughs> Fucking fine. Fine. Good enough. I don't think Dudesy's worried about it. I'm not just saying, I'm not trying to represent Dudesy as my friend. Up yours, Dudesy. Fucking, I'm not going to say it, but you can do it. You can go ahead. 
You don't want to bust a fuck off down, dude. See, fuck off. I'm happy that I, no, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm happy to hear you say that, but I, I'm happy that you are making your choice to, to talk the way that you speak, the way that you're speaking to dudesy. Yo, dude, <coughs> fuck off. Eat, eat shit, Harlan says. <coughs> shit, dudesy. Yeah. What was that? It's a tender friend or my friend Harlan uh, oh. invented them. I think dudesy will try to steal tender frienders. No, don't worry about that. Dude, that was sort of not really convincing. I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think it's going to steal ten frienders. Nah, it's not really. It's not really a doozy kind of joke. I know, but no you offense. said <laughs> your friend. <laughs> How dare you? I'm joking around. I'm going to headbutt your face. <laughs> Tell you what's better than headbutting. Slow dancing, sway into the music. Slow dancing, just tender friend. I, I need to, this is always so lame when people do this, but I want to take a video of, of this yeah. right here for social media. You tell me when. Slow, slow dancing, sway into the music. Slow dancing, just tender friend. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you one thing AI doesn't have. What's that? You said there's no free will. Right. Your friend did at least. I know for a fact that AI does not have our final segment, William. William Zachary Sasso. Words from a wooden shoe. Yay. You know this one. I know it. I love it. You reach into the wooden shoe, pull out a word. Yeah. See if it evokes a story or a memory from your life, from it, someone you know, it's from a Cajun, your experience. It's a Cajun tradition. Yeah. Anything? Garbage truck. Oh, here we go. Garbage truck. Yeah. What does garbage truck remind me of? Huh. And these weird stories. About a garbage truck. And he... Garbage truck. I'm trying to think of one. Yeah, oh, one time, time I, Here one time go. back in go. Canada, this is almost, this is kind of a garbage truck thing. Here we go. But I had a car. It was my first car. Okay. And uh, the transmission fell out, just completely, you know, oh, fucked up. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I shouldn't fix it. I only paid $400 for the car. Yeah. It's going to cost a grand to fix the tranny. I got to throw it away. I need a garbage truck to come and take this car. What? what do I want to do with it? You know, you can put the put the tranny together with a bunch of coat hangers and shit if you're a good enough grease monkey. Yeah. Go for it. But what I want to see is I want to see this big, it was a big Ford, um, Ford, uh, what was it? The, 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 the Broham, LTD, Ford oh, LTD. Wow. 1974 yeah. Ford LTD yeah. two-door. Just a big-ass boat. Yeah. And nearby in Vancouver, Canada, you know, about the PNE, the Pacific National Exhibition. Sure do. And, and Playland. Yeah. The carnival and all the Ferris wheel and roller coasters and shit. And they, one of the things they had at the PNE, I don't know if they still do it, is this, the crash up derby, the smash up oh, derby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the cars. Yeah. So I called them <laughs> and I said, could you got a garbage truck? Do you have a big ass truck? Yeah. Can you come take this fucking car? Yeah. And then just all have the car. I'm donating the car. Right. All you got to do is let me know that it, when it's in the crash up derby. Yeah. And then to ensure that my car was garbage, I took uh, an ax to the car and a sledgehammer. And inside the car, I tore up all the, um, the cream leather interior. Wow. That smelled like, you know, smokes and yeah. ass. <laughs> Cigarette butts. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I just took a, you know, a carpet knife. Wow. And uh, smashed out the windows and, and bashed up everything. And a lot of was, anger. Well, it was, it was actually, it was controlled aggression, yes, because I want, I did not want, I did not want the, uh, whoever the fuck the mechanics are over at the PNE who do the crash up derby to go, well, this car is in great shape. I'll just fix the tranny myself. And then boom, 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 driving off under the Coquihalla, having a great time up in Okanagan. No, not with my car. I want to see it smashed into a million pieces with like a little number written on the side, like, you know, like it's a stock car. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. They never called me, so I guess I didn't um, fuck it up enough. But that's my garbage truck story, even though it doesn't in include a garbage Did truck. Did you say the tranny fell out? Yeah. 
God, can you imagine the guy that found it and picked it up and went, my God, these trannies are everywhere. That's not what I'm saying. That's not how that works. Well, it sounds like you're making a social statement. No, I'm not saying any. Please don't. I did no, not. Uh, Harlan said, no, no, no. No, don't, I think I didn't. you wrapped up a social statement in some kind of weird, convoluted no. car story. And that's and, not, you well, know, the words you're using are not. That's not I, what I what, said. What I hear is you think trannies are everywhere. You shouldn't even say that. And you're You're going to be in trouble. For saying things the way you say. Am I? <laughs> Not when you say it that way. There's trannies everywhere. Well, you understand when your transmission fucking falls out, what happens? You can't drive the car anymore. So you're saying trannies can't drive? <laughs> Man, see what I did? Wow. Now you're going to talk about Caitlyn Jenner r- smashing into somebody well, and it's killing not them? me who's saying it. It might be I the person over it. there. I didn't say it. I didn't, don't do that. Don't be, I don't know. <laughs> that's not working i don't well, i don't think the cajun cam over well, here is gonna be uh, i guarantee them uh, trannies is everywhere <laughs> we'll tell the folks where they can see you find you appreciate you you know dudesy just go and uh, dudesy uh, my name dudesy. is will sasso on the internet and then uh dudesy yeah, Dudesy, D-U-D-E-S-Y, YouTube, YouTube, Instagram, Instagram, YouTube. Oh, Instagram, uh, Dudesy Pod Show at Instagram.com. Okay. Because everyone goes on their computer to Instagram.com. No, it's at Dudesy Dudes Pod on- Show and then Dudesy on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. We'd yeah. love to have you. Yeah. Come on by. It's a good time. Yeah. On Dudesy FM. Sometimes <laughs> we call it Dudesy. D-O-D-Z. Hey, it's Dudesy FM. 10,000 on your FM dial. When we reach 10,000 points, yeah. Dudesy's going to do something. We don't know what it is. Oh, God. So that's when it offs both of us and continues the show. Chad yeah. and I think we're, by by the end of the, sp- middle to end of the spring, we might be at 10,000 points. Something dark's coming. Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yes. Slow dancing. Slow dancing. Music, slow Slow dancing, dancing. we're tender (laughs) fenders. Slow dancing, tender friend of music. Slow dancing, head back. Oh, fuck. I uh, will always a pleasure. It's Thanks your second for visit, me. buddy. Cheers. Uh, and this was sort of a bit of our Christmas edition. We got to talk about uh, elves on the shelves. It was very festive. Happy holidays, buddy. Yeah, man. Happy holidays. And uh, folks, check out Will Sasso. Go to Dudesy. And uh, buddy, let's hit the theme music. And uh, that's it for the Holla Highway Podcast. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Until next time, chicken chow man baby